All right, so let's start our class today. Um, so today is a new topic, uh, totally new topics and very different from the previous discussion. So in the previous discussion, we learned uh, object detections and also features and the application of image features in the form of image stitching. So we have learned about two topics so far. And today is a totally new topic, uh, which is on camera geometry. In this camera geometry, uh, we will learn about, I think, three things, three different things. One is called single view geometry, or one view geometry, single view uh, geometry. And secondly, we will learn about two view geometry, two view geometry. Especially, we will discuss about fundamental metric. And the third one, we will learn about stereo system or spectrum stereo. Right. And in single view geometry, the first topic, we will learn about camera calibration. So, so all these three subtopics, single view geometry, two view geometry, and depth from stereo are all connected to each other. So to understand depth from stereo, you need to understand two view geometry in the form of fundamental matrix. And to understand fundamental matrix, you need to understand single view geometry or camera calibration. Okay, so let's start with this uh, camera calibration. So in camera calibration, uh, first of all, we have to know about the image formation, the geometrical image formation, geometrical image. Formation. So basically, when we talk about image formation, or in this case, geometrical image formation, the question is that the question here what is the correlation between? A 3D point in the real world, 3D point in the real world, which is which we can call X bar, capital X bar. Obviously, X bar here is what? If it's a point in 3D consists of what is the dimension of X bar? Yeah, three by one, right? This is because in, in homogeneous coordinate. Then if it is in homogeneous coordinate, then it will be four by one. But let's start with in homogeneous coordinate first, which is three by one. So in this case, it will be x, the so collocation of kingdom of x, xw, yw, dw. So this is the location of your point in 3D. And you want to know the correlation between this point and its corresponding point. Corresponding to the points on an image, which we call small x bar. And small x bar obviously is uh, two by one. And we call this xi, for example, and yi. That's a coordinate in the image coordinate. Okay, so that's the question that we want to ask. And what want to know the answer, of course. What is the correlation between the 3D point X bar and its corresponding to the point in, in, in the form of X bar, small X bar? 
So you can imagine that you know you have an object, for example, this is an object there, and then you have a point here, and the point is called capital X bar, and you want to have a picture of that, and then you take a picture of that image, and this with a ray, with the light of ray to the, the focal point to the center of the camera. And of course, actually, the image is where? Where is the image? Where is the image here? In this diagram, where is the image? Anyone? Where is the image in this diagram? Anyone knows? Where is the location of the image in this diagram? I think it's very easy, right? Can you just try? Where is the, the location of the image? Inside the camera, of course. Inside the chamber of the camera, right? But it's very difficult to draw that inside the camera, right? To draw that inside the camera is very difficult because it's well, too small there. So normally what we do is to have what we call virtual plane, virtual image. Uh, and virtual image, you can imagine that it's just in front of uh, the camera. So this is called virtual, virtual image because actually uh, the image is inside the camera. Okay, so then we can imagine that that x small x is actually here. So you can mention that this is x w to be obvious, and this one is r, right? So that's that's something that we want to know. What is the correlation between x w and x i? What is the mathematical uh, definition of this, right? Or mathematical correlation? So if you want to know the correlation between these two points, first of all, we have to know about the coordinate system. Coordinate system. How many are there? Systems. So how many are, are there? Two. Anyone agrees with this? Two. Who doesn't agree, who doesn't agree with two? Anyone? Three. Right. So three. Can you mention that's the three? If you the answer is three. Yeah. So what, what are the three? What are the three? Cartesian is not. It's, everything is Cartesian. Everything will be in Euclidean space. Coordinate system in the obviously in the problem statement there, we already have two, right? In the problem statement, there are already two. What is the in the problem statement? What are the coordinate system? So we have an image, right? That's the one coordinate system. It's an image coordinate system. And aside from image, what else? World and camera. So the world coordinate system and camera coordinate system. So there are three. So world, obviously, this one is uh, R3. Camera is R3. And image is R2. Right? OK, great. Any questions so far here? Right, so the, in the diagram, there is no, well, not really obvious uh, the coordinate system, but I can try to help you with the coordinate system here. I can draw for you. So this one, obviously, if you have the world coordinate system, it is, you, it's, it, you set the uh, 0, 0, 0, for example, then that one, the green dot, is actually the world system, the world origin. Okay, so you can decide anywhere here as the world origin. That's depend on you, depend on your uh, definition. Okay, so that is the world system. And the camera system has the uh, origin. Where is the origin of the camera system? Where is the origin of the camera system? Is the pinhole of your camera, which 
if you have pinhole, of course, if, this you, if you have a chamber with a pinhole, that the pinhole will be the origin of your camera. But in the modern system, there's no pinhole. There's only lens. And the lens have a focal length, uh, have, a, have the center, the center of the focal length. And the center of the focal length will replace the pinhole. So basically, you have an origin there that will be your y coordinate and this one will be your x camera y camera and then going outward is z camera that's your camera system any questions on that so you imagine your camera so if you have camera here your your x uh, your y will be there your x will be here your Z will be there. Okay, so based on your lens. Okay. Now, the third one is quite obvious. Where is the origin of the third one? The image coordinate. Where is that? If I have to put a point in this diagram, where will be the point of the origin? Center. Center of what? Center of image. Is that true? When you have an image, where's the origin? Left top, right? So if left top is not the center, you never have a zero zero of your image in the center. It's always on the top left. So the top left is the origin of your image coordinates. So this one is your origin. That one is your X I, and this one is your Y I. So Y R and Y C, they are parallel. X I and X C also parallel. Because your image, you know, uh, X and Y depends on your camera rotations. So it will follow the rotation of your camera. Any questions here? Okay, so we have three. Now let's discuss one by one. So imagine that if you have a world coordinate, this is your world coordinates, uh, zero, zero, zero here, and this is ZW, YW, YW, and XW. And your camera, for example, have this kind of coordinate system. This one is uh, ZC, or not ZC, ZC here, ZC, XC, YC. Okay, so you have the world, assume that the world coordinate is somewhere, somewhere here, it's the world coordinates. And then you have your camera, your camera is located here, right? This is your camera, that is your world coordinates. And then you have an object, a point, that, that's your object, your target object. Okay, so I can just, I can draw here the object is that the object is somehow in between the world origins and the camera origins. Now, if I don't have the camera, forget about the camera. If I just have this world origin system, where it will be the location of this? Point, where will be the location of this point? The location of this point will be with respect to zero, zero, zero there. Whatever it is, you, you can have a line there, X, Y, and Z, and then you will know the address, location of this with respect to that point, the origin of the world. Is that clear? So we can describe this point with respect to the world coordinates. So with respect to world coordinates, we have HW bar. So HW bar is with respect to the world coordinates. Is it understandable? So you have numbers here. The number will be based on HW, YW, DW. You will have some three numbers. Now, 
still imagine that you have the object there, and then I look that object from my camera. So I have camera here, I look that object. So from the camera perspective, although the location is the same, I will have different numbers. I will have different value of the coordinates because from this perspective, you have a new address, right? A new location. So you, you, will, you can describe this HW to XC. And XC has its own value, XC, YC, and ZC. Okay. So for, for the same point, because there are two perspectives, then you can have two different factors. Now, the question is, how can we transform XW into XC? Right, so the question is, well, there is one thing, how we can transform XW into XC. And the second thing is that you need also to transform this one further into XR which is xi, yi. In this case, you will have another coordinates, which is xi, yi, for that location, for the, the translation or transformation of xw on your image. So this one is xi bar. Okay, so there are two kind of transformation. One from the world, to the camera and the camera to your image. The goal of, of this transformation is that we want to know xi given xw. Given xw, we want to know what is xi. And for this kind of transformation, we will always have, what is the things here then? It is a matrix. Any transformation, you need a matrix. So you have a matrix here, call the matrix P. Okay, so let's look at the homogeneous coordinates from this point of time, homogeneous coordinates. If we want to use homogeneous coordinate, then what is the dimensionality of XW? Four, four by one. And what is the dimensionality of XI? Three by one. And then what is the dimensionality of P? Three by four. And this P is something that we want to know. This P is the topic of the discussion now. This is called camera matrix. Okay. And this camera matrix is something that you want to ask. What is this question here? What is P? Any question for this problem statement? Any questions so far? Okay, so if there's no questions, let's look at camera matrix P. Camera matrix P. So we know that XI, if you transform XW with P, then you will get XI. Again, this one is four by one, three by one, three by four. Now, the question is, what is P, right? As we know that from this diagram here, we know there are two different transformations. One is from the world into the camera and the camera to the image. So there are two different transformations. So P, matrix P here, consists of two different types of transformation world 
to camera and camera to image. Okay, so now that's something that we want to ask ourselves. Remember that if we have a work coordinate system, so assume there is a work coordinate system, so C, W, Y, W, uh, H, W, and you have an object here and call that object X, W bar. And the camera system, you will have this kind of camera system that C, X, C, and Y, C. And again, uh, from the world's perspective, from the world's perspective, this has the, the name or the value of X, W bar. From the camera perspective, it is X, C bar. Exactly the same point, but look, uh, uh, looked or, or uh, viewed from two different point of view. Okay, so in this case, uh, we want to have XC from XW, right? And call that transformation matrix M. So M trans transform XW into XC. Now the question is, what is M? What is M then? Anyone? Rotation, yes, you have to rotate that one, right? You see that the, the orange things have to be rotated in such a way that it has to be the same as the, uh, you have to, to rotate um, Y here. So you have to rotate the YC here so that it can align with WC. And then you have to rotate in such a way CC have, uh, have to be aligned parallel with CW and the same as uh, XC. XC have to be parallel with XW. So that kind of process is called rotation. So for example, here you have somehow like that, right? I do not know, uh, I cannot use my hand because the thumb has to be with the thumb parallel and then the other one has to be parallel, right? Because both, uh, this is opposite, so you cannot do these things. But anyway, you, you understand my point then. That's called rotation. After we do the rotation, then what else? We have to do translation because that uh, the, the blue has to go to the orange. So they are parallel, not only just not only the rotation, but also the place, the location. Okay. So this is called rigid body, uh, rigid body transformation. For rigid body transformation, it's only two. Rotation and translation. So M here will be uh, rotation first. It's up to you. We can do the translation first, of course, and then rotation or rotation first and then translation. So M is uh, translate uh, consists of translation and rotation. Any questions here? From for this one, transforming XW into XC. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is from camera to image. So camera to image is that uh, you have these orange things here, orange coordinates. And you have the image plane. So you have an image plane here. The image plane has to be parallel with the X and Y, XC and YC. All right. And assume that the, the object is here now, it is XC now, right? And the projection will follow a line projection. 
into the origin. And that point here, the point here is XI, XI bar. Okay, so for this one, we also have a transformation from, from XC into XI. And remember that XC is a uh, four by one. So by the way, this is four by one, four by one, four by one. This must be four by four, four by four. So, and here call this transformation K and XI has a, a dimensionality of three by one, K must be three by four. So now the question is what is K? Right. So if M here, obviously M consists of rotation. Number one is rotation, number two is translation. Now the same question we can ask to ourselves, what is K, right? K consists of what? So this is the question that I want to ask to you. What is the property of k the first one the most obvious one if you take a picture of a line or, or, or rectangular or something and then you take picture of that what happened with that rectangular or whatever with, with that square for example this square you have a square object you take picture what happened with that square object it become smaller right Smaller means that it's scaling down. You have to scale it down or don't scale it. You, have, you need to scale down the, the, the image. And secondly, after you scale down, what happened? This is not really obvious, but maybe some of you know about this. What else? A projection is scaling down the projection, by the way. What is the second one? The second one is that the, the coordinate here is zero, zero. This is something that I, have, I didn't mention anything, uh, any, anywhere here yet. But if you use this one, well, this is not obvious in this, in this picture, but if you further Take the further line or to elongate it longer and, and long and long, long, My English comes here. Uh, if you take the line from ZC further down, then it will coincide with the center of the image. It's not really obvious here, but this is will be the center of the image. So this one actually becomes the center of your image. That point is the center of your image. So actually the center of your image coincides with the center of your camera, right? And this location here, if you don't do anything, it's actually with respect to that center. So this one is actually with respect to that center. But now we know that the center is not the origin. The origin is actually here, right? So what do we do then? It is translation to to translation. So there are two different transformation for K. One is to downscale and then to to translation. So if you don't scale, what would be the matrix for downscaling? If you have to create a matrix and say this matrix is three by three, or, or now let's look three by three matrix. So if it's three by three, how can I write this the downscaling? Anyone? What is the matrix for downscaling? Diagonal matrix. Yes, diagonal matrix. So we have F, uh, F, X, F, Y. And because this one is the actually two dimension, uh, so let's put one there. 
zero 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 zero. By the way, uh, I can I can change it XC because XC is really transparent. XC actually will, will remove XC actually later on. But I just want to make it easier for you to understand that we can change this into three by one. Means that after you can exceed here, after you can exceed there four by one, you just remove the last one number one there. The last item number one, you can remove that and make this XC three by one. Okay, so you remove the, the last number one there in the homogeneous coordinate. And in that case, it will be three by one. If that is three by one, then this one it can transform into three by three. So K is three by three now. And the downscaling is done in this matrix three by three matrix. And translation, what is the metric of translation? So again, this is three by three translation matrix. How can I write translation? What will be the first number here? Not zero. Remember that translation is one. Yeah, it's always uh, identity matrix. So this is one, zero, zero, one. And this case two by two, but then you can have the location of the center, the location of the center with respect to the origin of the image. So the center of this image, for example, x0, y0. And then this one is 0, 0, 1. Okay, so again, the center of this image is here, according to the top left origins, is x0, y0. Any questions here? So again, x0, y0 is the center, the pixel at the center of your image. Now, if you multiply this, so call, call this one as scaling, and call this one is translation. So K or translation internal, in is called internal translation is different from the other t t is the other t is the external so if you have t internal t internal multiplied by s that will give you k and in this case if you multiply this two what will you get if you multiply this two what will you get what will be the first element at x zero zero all by at y right zero zero and then the last column x zero y zero one so that's called k k matrix and k matrix has a name and the name is intrinsic parameters. So this is a name. The name is intrinsic parameters. Intrinsic parameters. Intrinsic means that this is the property of your internal camera. And why this is called in these parameters? Because if you look at this one, this X and X0, Y0 is about the resolution of your image. It represents the resolution of your image. X0 and Y0 become large if your resolution is very large. And X0, Y0 become small if your resolution is small. Okay? So X0 and Y0 represent the resolution of your image. Now, what is this FX and FY then? What is fx and fy? How the your image? Uh, this, it's about the size of your image with respect to the real world object, right? And because of that, fx and fy represents what? It's yes, exactly focal length. It doesn't matter about the distance because you can always zoom in and zoom out, right? Because you have a zoom in and zoom out, this is again, it's internal parameters, internal camera. It's nothing to do with the world. That's why this is 
uh, is called focal length. Now, fx and fy uh, are about the same because your lens is actually around, around lens, right? Your lens is around. So because your lens is around, then fx and fy are the same. Ideally, this is the same, but that can be different. Why? Because to make a perfect round is very difficult. Okay, it's, there's no perfect round in the world. There's always something that is not really round. There is manufacturing uh, uh, drawbacks. There is no perfect circle in this world. Do you know that there's no perfect circle in the world? You do not know? Circle is a perfect, you know, because there is a pi. It never end. That's why the circle never, never, never perfect, because you have to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. There's always have to be curves, cannot line. That's why pi never ends. And if pi never ends, then the, the circle always has this curve. And that curve becomes curve and curve, and even though you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, it always becomes curve and curve and curve forever. Okay, so there is no perfect round shape in the world. Okay, any any questions here? So that's why fx and fy are slightly different, depending on the manufacturer. Any other questions here? Any questions here? Okay, so if there, there's no questions, that's for the intrinsic parameters. And M here, actually there is a name for this as well. The name of M is extrinsic parameters. Intrinsic parameters. So we haven't defined the extrinsic parameters as detailed as the uh, intrinsic parameter yet. So let's look at the extrinsic parameter. So extrinsic parameters M, M equals to T multiplied by R. Again, T here is T external, something to do with the distance between your camera and your object. So let's take a look at T first. T, uh, by the way, M is four by four. And that's P, P is four by four and R is four by four. So T is four by four. So what is the contents of this? What are the elements of T here then? What will be the first one, the first element on the top? Will be one. Yes, I can see matrix, right? One zero 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 one zero zero one. Okay. And of course it's zero zero. And then what will the last column? Yeah, it's translation uh, factor, which is Tx, Ty, Tz, and 1. This is translation matrix, 4 by 4. And what is rotation matrix then? Well, this is something to do with sine and cosine. Uh, this will be two angles uh, representing the latitude and longitude, azimuth and zenith. But I don't want to use one and cosine, I just want to write it in the form of R11, R12, R13, uh, R21, R22, R23, uh, R23, uh, sorry, R31, R32, R33. So basically, this is a three by three because it is a 3D space. But because of the uh, homogeneous audience, so we have additional column and track uh, and, and rows. Now, M equals to T multiplied by R. So in this case, if you multiply this, then identity matrix multiplied by R will give you R, right? So it will be R11, R12, I just copy in this here.
All right, so then I am zero, 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 and this one is W3, TX, TY, TZ1. That's the multiplication of uh, T and R. And further on, I can use a trick, uh, which is called block operation. I can split into a few blocks. In this case, I can split into four blocks. Okay. So block one is actually rotation. So this block one is actually rotation matrix. Block two, which is next to it, is actually the translation factor. So I can write in that way. I can have a separator. And I have another separator here and another separator there. And this one is zero, this one is one. Okay, so this is called block operation. Okay, so now, as I mentioned again, uh, in the end of the day, we want to have, here is the case that we want to have xi from p multiplied by xw. And we know that p consists of m and k. p consists of m and k. Okay? And if you look at the dimensionality, xi is 3 by 1, xw is 4 by 1. Somewhere here, sorry, uh, this is the other one, m first and then k. Right? So m is uh, k, we know that it's 3 by 3. So m here have to be 3 by 4. So we have to, we are, we are in the condition, we are in the situation that our M should be three by four because we know that K is three by three. So our K, we know here K is already three by three here. And that is fixed K, right? Your K is already there, three by three. Now, originally our M is actually four by four, but now we have to force M into, to become three by four. And what, how we can force this? We can force this by removing zero and one because zero and one does, doesn't have any information anyway. Right? So if you remove uh, zero and one, then your n become R t, and this R t is uh, R itself is three by three. This is three by three, and this one is. P is three by one. So if you concatenate them, in the end, this one is three by four. Is that imaginable? So basically when I write R and then that line T bar, you can imagine in this way, in this form, this form here, this form here. That is the meaning of R T without zero and one. Any question, anyone? Okay, so that's the geometry of of, of the formation from XW into XI. Again, you have K, you have M. And basically, uh, P, P here equals to K multiplied by R T bar. So this is the most important equation for the day. Your camera matrix P equals to K, the intrinsic parameters, multiplied by R T, which is the extrinsic parameter. Any question, anyone? Okay, so if there is no questions, let's talk about projection. So this one, it should have something to do with projection. 
actually it, this one this equation is called forward projection okay so p krt is called forward projection why because if you have um a triangle for example in the world you have a triangle in the world and then you have your camera system here and your camera system has an image you have an image here and then you project the in that triangle into the image means that you will have this kind of imagery so you will get let's see if i can so you will have this one connect with this one, uh, this one connect with that one. So this orange triangle is the projection of the black triangle. Okay, so, and this one is basically, you have X, I, so if you zoom in here, you have X, I, one, Then you have X, I, two, you have X, I, three, and then you have X, W, three, X, W, one, X, W, two. And what is the correlation here is, as I mentioned again, is the, as I mentioned here, is that X, I, bar equals to P, X, W. So if you have this, if you have P, you can project that the angle into your image. And you will know the location of that in your pixels. Okay. If you know P and XW, then you will know the location in your image even before you take the picture. Any questions here for forward projection? So if we can have a forward projection with this operation, then how about backward projection? So what is backward projection? Forward projection is obvious that we have the world points and then we do the projection of that point to the image. So this is the direction of the forward projection from the world to the image. Now, what is the meaning of backward projection? Backward projection means that you have your image point. So imagine that you have image point there, xi. And you want to know xw. Given xi and p, you want to know xw. Now the question is, is it possible? Why is it not possible? P, not because of p singular, because, yes, we lose, we lose the depth. Why, why, why do we lose the depth? Why do we lose the depth? Yes, the dimensionality is reduced from 3D to 2D. From 3D to 2D, you can always get the answer because from the higher dimensionality to lower dimensionality. But from lower dimensionality to higher dimensionality is impossible because there's a loss of information. Right. So when you do the forward projection, there's a loss of information and then you cannot return it back. Okay, so we know that we, we cannot return it back, it's fine, but we want to analyze this further about this forward projection. A point in 3D, so, so if you have 2D image and you have 3D world, a point in 2D becomes what in 3D for backward projection? A point in 2D will become a line. So point become a line. How about line? If you have a line, it becomes a plane. Yes, 2D plane. And if you have a plane, it becomes a cube. 
yeah, a cube or, or cone. Because if you have a plane, it mentioned that you have a plane, triangular plane like this, uh, triangular plane like, like, like that, for example, then it will become like this. And that one is, is like a cone moving outward. So moving in this direction back. Okay. Now the question is that can we have something useful for, for, for this? Can we get something beneficial for us if we know these uh, types of, of transformation? Point become a line, a line become a plane, and a plane become a cone. Now, actually, there is an application for this, which is called volumetric reconstruction. Volumetric reconstruction. Or silhouette based to the reconstruction. Still low web based to the reconstruction. Do you understand what the meaning of silhouette? Silhouette is, you know, uh, if I have this, that's called silhouette. The shadow, the hard shadow is called silhouette. So from shadow, if you have a shadow or, or image from a few different angles, you actually can construct the, the object in the world because you can intersect the, this plane or cone uh, from different angles. Okay, so that's called silhouette based 3D construction. So I guess I can show you, uh, so you can get some intuition of the, of the benefit of this. Silhouette based 3D reconstruction. So basically, that's the idea. You get the silhouette, the black images, right? And then you intersect that cone. And if you can intersect the cone, then you will get the 3D construction. So, and this is the application of that. So this is one of them. So you can have that kind of 3D construction based on the silhouette, based on the black projection of various viewing angle. All right, is it understandable? So that's the one of the applications of backward projection. But anyway, so with that application in mind, the most important thing is that now, how we can do this backward projection? Okay, so how we can have a line from a point? So now let's discuss about backward projection. And understanding backward projection will give you deeper understanding on how this transformation, rotation and translation, and camera metrics uh, can be used for different kind of applications. So anyway, so now the question is that how we can do this backward projection that can transform a point become a line. So for this one, you have to go through two kind of steps. One is to find camera centers. And second is to uh, find a point representing a uh, point in 3D representing the, the, the image point. So what I want to say with this, why this is two steps are important, is that imagine, so imagine this one again. So I will bring this here. Right. So if you want to have a point from this green point, for example, right, you have this given this green point, that green point then. So if you want to find the red line, then you have to know the origins of the camera. Once you know the origin of the camera, then you can have this red line. 
So the line is formed by two points. And these two points that are important, the origin of the camera and the representative of your point in 3D world. So if you want to do this, you have to do it in the same coordinate system. And the coordinate system in this case is camera system. So we have to work in the camera system, uh, in the world system, not the camera system, but in the world system. So this one has to be in the world system, in the world coordinate system. Because if you have these two points in different systems, you cannot connect the points. You have to make the points to be in the same coordinate system. And in this case, we choose world coordinate system as the reference space, as the reference system. Anyway, so we have to find camera center in the world system. Okay, so for this one, the camera center has two address, two possible address, right? The camera center in the camera coordinate system, in the camera system, or in the world system. If it is in the camera system, call it XC bar, which is equal to XC, YC, uh, ZC, equals to what? Zero, 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 obviously. That's fine. So this one, if it is in the camera system, it will be zero, 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 zero. But if it is in the world system, uh, sorry, I, XC is a bit weird name, uh, because XC is a point in the world, right? So if this C here, how is this C bar? So how is C bar? C, C means that the that C in the camera system. So, and if you use CW, then C in the world system. That C in the world system. So if it is in the world system, uh, how we can check this world system? CW equals to what then? M inverse is yeah, almost there. So I can calculate for you. So we know that uh, M multiplied by C equals to M multiplied by CW equals to what? CC, right? And CC is what? Zero, zero, zero. Right? If you transform CW to with M, then it will go to the camera system, right? Camera system here for the center will be zero, zero, zero. Right? So uh, I can write down here that it's actually equal to CC and CC equal to zero. Right? So M is R multiplied by RT, right? CW equal to zero. Now, this is the tricky part. Uh, we can change this one because this one is basically a rotation and then the translation. So we, I can do this R multiplied by CW plus P bar. I rotate and then I translate. Yes? And then equals to zero. Any question for the last equation here? I do the rotation and then I then do translation. Agree with this? Right. So and then R. CW equals to minus P bar. And CW bar equals to R inverse P bar minus. So that's how you can get CW from R and T. Assume that you know R and T, rotation and translation, then you can get the camera coordinate system in the world's uh, camera center in the world body system. Any questions here, anyone? So we are talking about that point. We are talking about, about this point here. So what is the R, R inverse? R, remember, is this orthogonal? matrix 
If this orthogonal matrix, the inverse of orthogonal matrix is the same as the transpose. Exactly. So this one is minus R transpose T bar. Why do we like transpose more than inverse? Easier to compute, of course. Inverse is very expensive. Any question, anyone? No questions? You have to be fluent in this transformation. That's why I have this small exercise in backward projection because your assignment, your next assignment will use this kind of operation. So your assignment will be depth from video. So you're given a video, you have to find the depths. So that's why you have to be fluent in this, in this kind of manipulation. You really need to understand. Okay, again, uh, if you have questions, please let me know. Any question, anyone? So now, by, by doing this, we know the uh, we know the camera coordinates given the camera rotation and translation. Of course, there is a question here: how we can get R and T, right? So to get R and T. It is called camera calibration. So I will discuss with you further on later on how we can get R and T. So again, the, the task for getting R and T is called camera calibration. Okay. Right. Uh, let's move on further now to the second second step. So we finish with the first step. We know already that first line. Our first point here. So we know that R C W is number one here. Number two is this one. We need to know this point, that point in the world or the system as well. Because now you know that point in the image coordinate system, but you do not know that point in the world coordinate system. So we need to transform XI to X, somehow XW. So here we know the correlation of XR equals to P XW, right? And we want to know XW, but to get into XW is impossible, right? Because we know that we, we lose the information. We, we don't know the text. So for that one, we force it. We force this one, XW hat, which is different from XW, actually, that sort of is not the same. So XW hat is not the same as XW. They are not the same. And XW hat, if you force it, then you can just put P inverse XI, right? Agree with me? You can force P to be inverted. So let's look at the dimensionality. What is the dimension of XW? What is the dimension of XW here? Four by one. And XI? Three by one. And P? Three by four. Now, because P is three by four, can you do the inverse? No. Inverse means that you have to, to be squared. It is not square, it is rectangular. And because it's not square, it's rectangular, then you cannot do the inverse. But we need to force it to be invertible. How we can force this? Called pseudo inverse. So you force it using pseudo inverse. What is the implication? What is the, the idea? Well, well, pseudo inverse here is very simple. One of them at least very simple. It is P transpose P inverse P transpose XR. That's pseudo inverse. One of the definitions of pseudo inverse. This is not accurate, but this is can be done. Yes. You're running out of time. Oh, really? Um oh, okay, again. Okay, good. I hope it's good.
Oops. Okay, yeah. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so now, this is the definition of P pseudo inverse, P transpose P. So if you want to know this one, it's actually four by three, three by one, uh, this one is four by four. So four by four is a square matrix, then you can do the inverse. So now what is the meaning of this, right? What is the meaning of this uh, uh, forcing uh, the P, which is not invertible become invertible? So as I mentioned again, XW is not the same as X, uh, XW hat is not the same as XW bar because when you do the inverse, uh, here is the things you have the image coordinate, and this is the line that you want to find. And to have the line of that you want to find, you have to find the point in the center, and you have a point there in the world or the system. So actually, this one is uh, XI. This one is xi, the location in the image is xi. This is cw, right? So when you have xy, xw bar, actually we do not know where it is. Of course, after the calculation, we will know, but it will be somewhere here, either here or there or wherever, wherever the place, but it must be along the line. Okay, so xw hat, xw hat, it's not the same as XW because XW perhaps is actually here, but it will be on the line. And as long as the point is on the line, on the red line, then we can always form a line. So we always can have the red line after we can have XW hat. All right. Any questions here? So that's how we can do the back projection. We first do the computation of the camera center in the world body system, and then we translate or transform XI into XW hat. We assume here that we know P, we know R and P for back projection. So if there's no question, of course, the question that we have in mind, how to get P and how to get, um, to get R, P, and K. So not only that we want to have P, but we also want to know what is R, P, and K, because P equals to K, RP. So we want to decompose P further down into KRP. So this problem, this problem here is called camera calibration. Camera calibration is that given uh, XI bar and XWI, which is XI put xi here, xi means that the points in the world, there are pairs, you know, there are pairs. So we want to have, given these pairs of points in the world and the image, we want to find 
the value of B and also the value of ART. And this is called counter calibration problem. Any question, anyone? Yeah. Uh, in the coordinate, the origin should be two p. Right? In the coordinate, yeah, the, the right side. Well, I found C C and C W is the same position. But I mean, okay. I think it's all right with me at the same line, so it should be two p multiplied. No. So everything here, everything that we mentioned is in the framework of. Uh, world coordinate so cw yw xw so this is the, the, the reference the type reference should be on the world system so we put all the points in the world system we mean the origin the cw origin and the xi and the x the the half is the same line. They have to be in the same coordinate system. So the whole point, the whole things here have to be in the world system. If it's not in the world system, it would be confusing, right? To draw a line. To draw a line means that we have to draw a line in a certain system. And in this case, we use world system to draw the line. Because in the camera system, it's not useful. The world system is more useful for us to get the line, right? To get the 3D. When we when we do the 3D reconstruction in the in terms of the silhouette 3D reconstruction, the reconstruction has to be done with respect to the world system, because we live in the world system, right? Any questions on that? Yeah. So good questions. Uh, so not be confused uh, that. That you know everything here has to be transformed into the world system first. So CW there, actually CC becomes CW. So anyway, uh, any any questions here? Okay, so if there's no question, let's do the camera calibration. So let's have a discussion on camera. Calibration. Again, the camera calibration is that we have a corresponding point. Uh, previously, I write as xi, but let's put xn so that it can be the same as the reference node. So xn or xi is the same thing. So given this corresponding point of xn and xi, which previously I write as xn small xn, small xn capital xn n equals to one up to n, right? So we have n points, n corresponding points. We want to estimate first, we want to estimate p. And after we estimate p, we want to decompose p to, so first we estimate p. And we further on decompose p to k or p. So this is the two tasks that we want to ask how we can get done. So step one, step one is to compute P. So how we can compute P is actually the same as we, how we can compute homography. So XI equals to XI Yi one three by one, and this one equals to p. Remember, this is equal to p multiplied by x w, and x w is four by one. X w y w uh, c w one. Okay, so we, we can write this one to. Uh, let's simplify. So we can write xi yi one equals to p one one p one two p one three p one four p two one p two two p two three p two four p three one p three two p three three p 
54 multiplied by x w y w p w one. So these two are given. So this one and this one given. Known. The unknown is this part here. This is unknown. And we want to find the value of P11 until P41. That's the task. The first task to estimate P. All right. Any questions here, anyone? So again, as I mentioned, this is the same as what we did uh, with uh, homography. So we can have Xi equals to P11 Xw plus P12 multiplied by Yw plus P13 uh, Zw plus plus what? Plus what? Anyone? P14. Divided by P31 multiplied by Xw plus P32 Yw plus P33 uh, Zw plus P34. You can do the same for Yi. So you do the same for Yi. You do the same. And then you do the uh, factorization. And in the, in the end, you will have uh, XW, YW, CW1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus XI, XW, minus XI, YW, minus XI, ZW, minus XI, 0, 0, 0, 0, XW, YW, CW1, minus YI, XW, minus YI, YW, minus YI, ZW, minus YI, multiplied by, yeah, multiplied by P11, P12, until P34, uh, equals to zero. So we try to plot in this way. So the unknown, what is the dimension of P? Three, five, four, right? Which is 12 by one. Is that correct? There are 12 numbers, right? Yeah, 12 by one. So now here is, what is the dimensionality on the, on the left side? Two by, two by 12. So if we write it down in a simple form, it would be A multiplied by P equals to zero. And A at the moment is two by 12. Uh, P is 12 by one. Zero is a vector of two by one. Can you solve this problem? No because A is too small. And, and how you add more point then? What is the minimum point? Six. Yeah. So you have put six here. So it is, if this n equal to six, if n equal to six, then it will be uh, 12 by 12. At least n have to be equal to six. Actually, it is uh, let on we know that it's not necessarily six, but five is five is fine, perhaps. But anyway, so let's put that in, in that way. Greater or equal to six. If it is greater or equal to six, then it will be solvable. But anyway, so we know that a P, what is the problem with this? What is the problem with this uh, equation? Okay, what is the initial solution? For this problem, what will be the easiest solution? Zero. Yeah, P equal to zero. If P equal to zero, then it's a trivial solution. So P equal to zero, it will be a trivial solution. And we don't want to have this trivial solution. So we have to make a subject constraint uh, that P, magnitude of P has to be equal to 
one. So again, if it's the case in that case, uh, in that way, then we have we can minimize a multiplied p equal to uh, minimize a equal to p with respect to p, subject to the magnitude of p equal to one. So this is uh, the equation that we can uh, try to solve, right? This a multiplied by p is not necessarily to be zero. As long as we minimize, that's fine already. Okay, so remember that a multiplied by p is not necessarily to be zero, but as minimum as possible. And what is the solution of this then? What would be the solution? Using? Yeah, using XVD. And if you use SVD, A equal to U D V transpose, and P is what? P is yeah, the last row. The last row of V transpose. So that's the solution for this problem. That's how you do the calculation. In the past, I asked students to do the camera calibration in the past, but this time you don't need to do your own camera calibration. I will provide you with the camera calibration. Okay, so you don't need to do this because you have done this for homography anyway. So you know how to do it. Okay, so that's how you check P. So again, uh, as we discussed uh, last time, actually this one is very complex function and you know, uh, the solution for FPD is actually only give you suboptimal solution. It's only give you suboptimal solution. So this one is if you the solution, P solution from, from FPD. And we have to optimize further down. We have to optimize further using this square. So if you want to optimize further, you, you need to to P star using this square. So I will teach you a bit about how we can we can improve this. So how we can do this improvement here. Again, the improvement is done using this square. So how this square can, can be used? This square. Oh, by the way, for those who who don't take uh, pattern recognition, uh, least square is the same as MLE, maximum likelihood estimation. But if you don't know maximum MLE, it's fine. Just try to learn about these squares. Okay. So these squares, again, uh, we want to know P, matrix P, optimum matrix, matrix P, by trying to minimize as human mean you change p in such a way that you get uh, this function e of p, the error function of p, to be as small as possible. So there's an error function that we need to define. And this error function e in this square, so in this square, so now let's look at the error function for error function based on based on least square. So E of P equals to what? List, what is the idea of least squares? The square one is simple, right? You just squares. But what does it mean by least? What is least here mean? List mean what? Minimum, minimum of what? The minimum distance, right? Minimum distance or minimum error. What is the distance here? Distance between what and what? The distance between your x and the distance between your x, small x and minus your projection of P based on capital x n. You square it. 
and this one is one of the two. Well, you don't need, you need to have one of the two. That's the idea. You have this one. You have this one, right? You do not know P, but you know that one. So you have to find P in such a way that this equation become zero or become small. That's the idea of these squares. But it has to be done not just one point, but for all points. So you have to do this for all points, n equal to one and two n. And remember, you actually, because you use uh, SPT, n is greater than six. So can we solve this problem? Uh, how we can solve this problem? So let's look at this. Uh, this one means that this equation means that sum over n, you have x n y n one minus the projection p over multiplied by x capital x n y n z n and one. That's what you need to do. So if you try to solve this problem, right? Uh, if you try to solve this problem, uh, then you have to do this. Uh, you have xn minus p11 multiplied by xn minus p12 multiplied by yn minus p13 multiplied uh, by zn. Um, yeah, minus P14 divided by P31XN, P32YN minus P33DN, P34. So the same for well, YN, you have to do the same here. And one here has to be equal to minus one. Uh, maybe that's a good idea. Let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. But so then it can be the same as the So let's forget about this. So you do the same here without normalization first. Uh, Yn multiplied by one xn minus p two two yn minus p two three zn uh, minus p two three two four. And then one will multiply by P to one Xn minus P three to Yn minus P three four uh, P three. So that's a P three C here. P three to seven minus P three four. So basically, this is the, the thing that you need to do, and then you square it, right? Anyway, so my point here is that when you try to do this minimization means that you have to do D, E on P with respect to D. For example, in this case, uh, you can have P11. If you want to, to know about P11, in this case, you do the derivative with respect to P11 equal to zero, right? And you know that this one in the end will be over N, uh, D, P11 on Xn minus P11 Xn minus P12 Yn minus P13 Zn minus P14 square equal to zero. So you need to do the derivative fit on that. And well, you can do this, but simply by uh, n here, you know that everything uh, that doesn't have P11 will be zero. Right, it will be scalar. So you have xn minus p11, xn minus p12, yn minus p13, zn minus p14 multiplied by minus xn equal to zero. Right. So in this case, the, our goal again is in this case is try to find the value of p11 to get the value of p11. But as you can see here, P11 depends on the other variable. And actually, you will not be able to get a closed form equation. 
that P11 equal to something. You cannot have that kind of equation. So because you cannot get that kind of closed form equation, in the end of the day, uh, what would be your solution? Yes, we have to use Newton method. Newton's method. We need to use Newton methods that give you uh, P11 new equal to P11 old minus the gradient or in this case TE P with divided by uh, with respect to TP11 and that one is the first derivative and divided by the second derivative P E P T P11 square. So that's the Newton method. So the second derivative, the first derivative divided by the second derivative. And then you need to have a learning rate. The learning rate is, for example, alpha. Okay, so this is the Newton method, how you can have, so this one is when P11 equals to P11 old. Right, so this is the Newton method. And based on this Newton method, then you can have the improvement here, the improvement that we have done from PSVD into PLS. So why do we need to have SVD in this case? Why don't we just use Newton method or least squares? Why do we need to have SVD for? No, this one is you need to do this, right? Newton method. But why we don't directly use Newton method? Why do we need to have SVD? Exactly, it is for initialization. So SVD can give you good initialization normally, most of the time. It can give you this location here, that location. If you don't use SVD in the initialization, what do you do then? If you use Newton method, if you do initialization, what kind of initialization that you have to do? Random initialization. If random initialization, what is the problem then? Local minima. Exactly. So if you don't use random, uh, random initialization, for example, this one is random initialization, then you will get into this local minima problem. Okay. And that's the benefit of using SVD. SVD already somehow. Uh, give you good initialization, but it's not perfect. So then you need to have a least square solution to improve it further. All right. Okay, so what is the problem with the Newton methods? What is the problem with Newton methods? Anyone notice the problem? I mentioned this actually in the pattern recognition class. The problem of Newton method is P second derivative. So the second derivative here, the second derivative can be zero. If it is zero, then you cannot do anything. The system is broken, right? So to prevent this from happening, there is a method uh, further down, uh, improvement for, for Newton methods, this extension actually from Newton method, which is called Lavenberg Marqua. Lavenberg Marqua. So, yeah, but I will not teach you uh, further about Lavenberg Marqua. It's basically try to solve this uh, zero problem for, for the second degree. Right. Any questions so far here? So, uh, you need to read the textbook. So this one is taken from the textbook. The textbook is from uh, multiple view geometry. Okay. So the, the textbook is called multiple view geometry. So this is the book. It is available on the internet. So if you can you want to download on the internet, you can download on the internet. That's the textbook for this part, the geometry. Until the depth estimation, you need to read this book. 
Okay, so the information is actually is given on the website. If you look at the website, uh, there are some chapters that you need to read. Okay. Any questions here, anyone? No? Yes. Of course, yes. Uh, actually, this is uh, uh, a simple example that I keep here just to highlight how we can do it, right? But actually, this one is not just P11. This one has to be done in a way of, uh, have to be done P, E, uh, P bar. If you want to P bar, it's possible P bar, right? With the factors, uh, then it doesn't really matter actually whether the factors are matrix, and then P, P bar here. So this one will give you a vector at the output. Right. So I think you you learned it uh, in in pattern recognition, right? To solve that vector problem, yeah. So the solution will be the same as in uh, as in uh, pattern recognition. So we did this actually in the pattern recognition. If you take pattern recognition, you know how to solve using least squares or using MLE. Actually, that's uh, the assignment in pattern recognition to solve this equation. Anyway, so any question, anyone? Yes. It is a no, the homography is we stop here. We stop using SVD. We stop using that. But I didn't explain the detail that much, although I today I also didn't explain that much. But uh, at that time, even briefer, even shorter uh, in the discussion of uh, uh, this square. So for the homography, we need to do this. We need to do this one as well. But in the assignment, you, I, don't, I didn't ask you, I don't ask you to do this square. Yeah, but homography, the proper homography, if you look at OpenCV homography calculation, they also use this square on top of SVD. Yes. So we can as I mentioned, uh, if you can have a cross-form solution, you can use uh, that cross-form solution of, of uh, X inverse, or in this case, it will be A inverse, right? But I don't think that you can have a cross-form solution for this particular equation. So uh, I think in the classification, in the pattern recognition, we discuss about Newton method. So it will be closer to the classification solution. Although the problem is regression, this is also the problem of regression, but the solution will be close to the classification problem that we have. Because to have a post form solution will not be possible for this particular uh, uh, problem, for this particular problem. Okay. Right, any other questions, anyone? So if you don't have any questions, that's actually the first step. The first step of this one, the first step of the camera calibration that we, we now can estimate P, All right? So we can have P now with this solution, given Xn and capital Xn. So this is a, a, a condition that we have to keep in mind that we have to have Xn and capital Xn. Now, my question is that, how can we get x, small Xn? How can we get small Xn? It is said that it's given to you, but in the end of the day, if you have to do it, you have to know where to get Xn, right? Small Xn. How can you get small Xn? Well, you take a picture, a point, and then you know the point location here, right? Then the point, you know the point location in the image. You just search in the using edit, edit the image editor and so on, you will know the location of the point. That's how you can get small xn. But now the question is, how can we get the capital xn, the big xn? How can we get the capital xn? Well, you put a point in the world, whatever point that you can get. And then measure that with certain distance to your origin of the world. You can have a ruler there, right? So the point. But this is very cumbersome. It's very difficult to do this, right? At, at the three, you have to do it n times. And times here, at least, have to be six points. 
So how to make it more efficient? Using oh. using port exactly. What kind of port do we need? Yes, a checker port. A checker port. So checker port. What I mean by checker port is somehow like it's a calibration port actually. Uh, Yeah, it's a good reason to have a break. Oh, no, no, not a good reason. <laughs> uh, well, it's connected now. Sorry. Um, well, I just want to say about checker board because uh, it's a very, very quick one. Uh, right, so the checker board is uh, something like this one. Right. Uh, oh, the checker board, uh, checker box in this case. So you have this kind of pattern, right? My drawing is a bit lousy, but you can imagine this. Right. So this is the board uh, of your checkerboard or checkerboard box. So now, if we have the checkerboard, imagine you have checkerboard here in front of you. Then where will be the world coordinates? Where will be the origin? When will be the origin of the world? Where is it? Where will be the origin of the world? Well, you can define anywhere, but the easiest one, and then you will you can have this one here. This one is your zero zero zero. So this one is your zero zero zero. That you choose that one as the world origins. Okay. And when what what is the unit here? What is one unit? What where is one? Where is two? Where is three? Yeah. So that will be the one cell is one unit. The other cell here is two, three, and so on. So you have three points there in that exist. And then you know, if you have this uh, coordinates, then you know the location of this point then, right? So that's how you get the capital XN from the checker box that you have. And when you take a picture of this box, like what you have here, it is a picture of the box, right? Then imagine, now imagine that this is already a picture. So it's become your picture then. And for example, this point here, zero, zero in the world, you know the location in X and Y, XI and YI. So that's, you know that this one is one point. In this case, XN, in, for that particular point, XN, sorry, uh, this is capital XN, XN, X1, for example, X1, Y1, C1 equals to, Zero, 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 and this is corresponding point. The corresponding point is uh, x one small x one x i y i equals to equals to what? Well, we do not know that equals to this point here, right? x i and y i. That's how you can get the corresponding between xn and y, xn and capital xn and small xn. And you can do also for this one, you know, in the world coordinate system already now, based on the checker coordinates, and then you know the coordinates with respect to the pixels. All right. Any questions here?
that's how you get the xn and xn and small xn and because you have xn and capital xn now then you can estimate b using this svd solution and these squares and the next question is of course after we get p how we can get art right so that will be for the next discussion okay so any question anyone all right so if there's no questions uh let's have a break and we discuss again at 8 p.m okay Yeah. Which figure? The figure of the project. The this one are in the same line on the in the whole system. In the whole system, we have the same line. Yes. The origin of the. World. So imagine that this is the world. Point, yeah, yeah, yeah. the world point. This okay. is the world origins. Yes. And your camera is here. Your yeah. camera is there. Yeah. Yeah. Your camera is here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you have an image plane. Your image plane is actually inside the camera. But now imagine that this is here. Yeah. 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 Right. So now, how we can draw this line in the world? Yeah. But I think the line shouldn't pass the origin of the world. No, it's not. Nothing to do with the origin of the world. It's origin of the world. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, that's why I'm confused about this. CW is you. the is the camera coordinate, camera world, or a camera origins with respect to the world. Oh, okay. Sorry. Because the world system has to be there. Oh, but it's, it's the camera. Camera with respect to the world. Origin. Not the, okay. Camera origins with respect, respect to the world. Oh, yeah, yes. Because otherwise, it will be always zero. Yeah. Pattern recognition. Yes. Yeah. Should we call sequential learning method? Yeah. Also, any formula of the predictive distribution. Uh, so we pass the data points into the predictive distribution. Yeah. It's a sequential learning. So it's a sequential. So. <clears throat> So when your first data come in, you learn from this data, mm -hmm. and then you predict for all the 49. Mm -hmm. And then the second data come in. So the second data is randomly chosen. Okay. Uh, and then now you have two data. So you learn from these two data, okay. and then you estimate the 48 points. Okay. Or maybe you can also estimate the 50 points also fine, because two here must be correct in the test. Right? Okay. So you do repeat this again and again 50 times. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, no one. Yeah, I have a uh, problem about the last page. Mm. The last one. How much is that? This one, um, actually, you know, the derivative. I have mm. a question: Is that it is ep? Is that it? It's a scalar or a scalar? It's a scalar. Because error function, right? Error function is always scalar. Yeah, but I think it's uh, uh, the uh, like uh, three three rows, three rows, but you yeah. square. Vectors. This one is vector, right? Well, yeah. Vector square. Vector square. So it's a scalar. Yeah. Do you know vector square? I don't have to no. Vector is equal to two by one square. Can Can you do that? It means that you have to uh 
to do the transport first. Uh, two ones. Oh, and then oh, it makes that one. And then two ones. Okay. So this must square, right? Oh, and then you get four one, right? So it's actually like uh, oh, no, this uh, is not for one. Like this a, is uh, a back for, yeah. So this one becomes so in that case, uh, for example, p square is actually p transpose p. Okay. So this one is the scalar. So the zero is uh, the this not, one. If it is p one one, yeah, if it is p one one, it's scalar. scalar. But it's really not p one one. That yeah. one is just to switch. Oh. So it's a it's a vector vector. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. In uh, homework in classification, mm -hmm. well, we see any one mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe I should uh take well in the first I should take uh one point and randomly tricking randomly and then as the tricking data yeah. and the other forty nine part as a point as the testing data. But uh, there's a question that if in the last one I take all fifty. Yeah, that's something I must do. Uh, you just take all fifty and then apply for all of these five. Well, and uh, is these numbers are the point I take the number of the points I take. I, I look at randomly. So well, if uh, there are something that you get repeat it because I my my array is dynamic. My array is dynamic means that first array I have only jump one. Second array I have so the index will be repeated because my array is dynamic. My array is not static. 
Oh, well, if that if it means that uh, I choose the points for 50 times, but maybe not the order. You have to take it 50 points uniquely. As I mentioned again, my array is dynamic. You know the meaning of dynamic here? Yes. So first one, I only have one. The second one, I have two. So the numbers will, although the number is repeated, but the data is not repeated. Because my memory is dynamic. So you don't need to follow these numbers. I just take all of the points. Yeah, or if you want, if you're confused, then 49 is fine. And take your one as the last test data. Uh, Yes, but well, uh, as in this figure, uh, in this figure mm. the blue, the blue point may be the predictive, uh, that is predictive mean of the every. Uh, and uh, I cannot answer that one. You have to answer that one yourself. But I just say that the random numbers here. The data is not repeated. The data is still unique. But if I, for example, in the, uh, if I take the first one points at the end, why I should take fifty points? I I have already. That's okay, right? Because forty eight will be correct, and only two that are not will be not correct. Yes. The forty eight will be uh, be correct because it's part of your training data. Thank you. 
So let's start the second section. So the second section is the continuation. So we look at how we can decompose P into KRT. So the second set, the second step here is to decompose P into KRT. We have P, and the question is how we can decompose it. Right? So step two here. Start to decompose P to K, R, and T. So the decomposition is fairly mechanical. Mechanical means that you know that you just follow follow the procedure here. The first step uh, in in this procedure in this procedure is to extract a matrix, whatever matrix you call it. Um, we use M use as uh, we use what are the name, right? So call it J, for example. Extract J. J is a three by three matrix, three by three matrix. And this one is uh, taken J equals to the first first three by three sub matrix of P. Is it understandable? The first sub matrix of P. So imagine that we have P, P11, P21, P31, P12, P13, P14, P22, P23, P24, P32, P33, P34. The first three, by three sub matrix means that we take this as J. That's the meaning of the sentence there. And once we have J, so we did we using RQ decomposition. RQ decomposition is a standard package like a QR decomposition, RQ decomposition. Uh, J equals to K multiplied by R. So what is a uh, our Q decomposition is basically, you know, you let me say. Uh, so, how many of you know QR decomposition? How many of you know QR decomposition? Oh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, our Q decomposition is, I can give you an example of our Q decomposition. A can be decomposed into RQ. For example, if you have a matrix 2, 2, 1, 1, for example, if you do the matrix decomposition, it will be 0, 0, minus 2.83, minus 1.141, multiplied by 0 0.71, 0 0.71, 0 0.71. It's happened to be this way for this particular example, minus 0 0.71. So basically, RQ is a the, this part here has to be a triangular matrix. So the right, the right part of the matrix has to be a triangular matrix. So that's the definition of RQ. The, the R has to be triangular matrix. That's the, that is the, uh, the, the, the constraint that we have to impose in this RQ decomposition. 
Q doesn't have any constraint. It can be any matrix. So R has to be a triangular matrix. So it's to be triangular matrix. Okay, so triangular matrix, that means that the triangle has to be has some value and the other side has to be zero. Okay, so that's basically the RQ decomposition. So K has to be uh, in this way. And then the third, if you want to know why it has to, to be RQ decomposition, right? I will not explain this, but if you want to know, you can look at the textbook, the textbook that I just mentioned. That textbook is actually the Bible of uh, computer vision geometry. So in computer vision, there's a called geometry community, uh, which doing the research in uh, 3D world reconstruction. And that book is actually the Bible of people working in this 3D geometry uh, computer vision. So please read that book. Uh, that book will stand very deep uh, in the discussion. So anyway, so, uh, T, uh, you can get T. So now you already have K and R. So K and R already obtained. And then T, you can just have the inverse of K multiplied by P1, 4, P2, 4, and P3, 4. Again, we have P already. So this is already known. This is already known as well because it's taken from that one. So this is known as well. So by having K and having P, we can have T. Now the question is why is this, right? So I will give you the quick answer for this. So the question is why? So the answer is because K inverse P, K inverse P equals to what? Remember that P equals to, P equals to what? The definition of P is, K multiplied by R T, right? This is the reason of P, uh, of P. So K inverse P become what? R T, yes. So it become R T, a matrix here. Um, that matrix R T. Now, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is that if you uh, have K inverse P, P, again, P11, P12, P13, P14, P21, P22, P23, P24. Equals to RT. R is R11, R12, R, oh, sorry, R21, R21, R31, R212, R13. R1, R1, R22, R23, R32, R33, and you have T, X, T, Y, T, Z. Right? Now, if you, you what you want to know is this one. That's something that you want to know. So to get that one, you multiply K in first with what? With? With the last row, yeah, the last column. That's right, the last column. This last column will give you that value. So that's why we have this equation here. Is it understandable? Right. Okay, so that's it. As I mentioned, it's very, very mechanical. You just follow the step here, and that's it. Then you can decompose P into KRT. Of course, there are so many questions of why. Step number two, for example, I didn't explain why we have to do it in that way, but again, you can find the explanation in the textbook if you want to know the, the reason of step two. Any questions so far, anyone? Okay, so if there is no questions, um, I just want to have a quick discussion on, on the assignment. So on the assignment,
So as I mentioned again, for example, this uh, camera geometry, right? So here, actually, there is an explanation of which part of the textbook that you need to read. So you need to read this one because this is part of the exam. So everything that is called reading, it will be, will be used for the exam. Additional resources is not necessary. You just, you know, if you want to know further, you can look at the additional resources. But the reading is compulsory because the exam will be taken from this reading. Any question for this uh, reading? <laughs> yeah, so this uh, is written there for you to read. <laughs> it's not there for just for the sake of being there. Uh, okay, so any questions here? Yes. Most of the lectures are, are cup capturing all this. So if you understand the, the, the lectures, most likely that you will have no difficulty understanding this. Reading because I take uh, I took the the lecture notes I write I wrote the lecture notes from this reading material. No, so the additional resources are not are not are not necessary to be read. Additional resources there it's not necessary to have to be read, right? But if it is a reading here, it, you need to understand what's going on there, especially with respect to the lecture. Uh, discussion. Okay, so you have to have a deeper understanding based on this reading material. Because otherwise, you will not have any reading material. Right? So that's the whole point of this thing there. Any other questions? Uh, it's likely, it's not decided yet, but it's likely that the exam, as I mentioned in the earlier, perhaps that it will be multiple responses. You, so, so you don't need to memorize all the things. Of course, you have to memorize to some extent, uh, but you, the more important is the understanding of the material instead of memorizing. And on top of that, uh, actually, you are allowed to bring a piece of A4 paper for your cheat sheet. Okay, so for cheat sheet, you can have A4 paper, one sheet of A4 paper. Any questions on that? It's not multiple choice. So it is not multiple choice. It is multiple responses. Yes, so it's a multiple responses mean that the answer can be more than one, or maybe there is no answer. Okay, so there's maybe no answer. Maybe all of the choices are the answers. Who knows, right? So that's called multiple responses. And yes, you need to justify why you choose that one to be correct and why you choose that one to be wrong. So wh whether this is wrong or right, you need to write a justification. Okay, so that's the exam uh, format. Any question on the exam format? So if you don't, if you don't write the justification or your justification is wrong, but your letter is correct, for example, then it's still wrong. Now, what happened if uh, the other way around, uh, your, you know, your justification is right, but your letter is wrong, but there's no such a thing actually. Uh, but anyway, so if the justification has some right point related to the question, of course, then it, you still have point, it's not zero. Any questions on that? Okay, so if there's no questions, uh, let's look at the uh, CA1. So CA1 is a revised a bit. Previously, I put reports here and there, but actually there's no reports. Everything has to be in the Jupyter notebook. Okay, so there's no separate report needed. Everything has to be written on the Jupyter notebook. Now, you have to be you have to compile your code in your submitted notebook is that understandable so i need to see the results of you compiled by you okay so sometimes you just keep the code in the in the jupyter notebook okay? that's uh, defeating the purpose right because i want to see your results so please put the results in the jupyter notebook any question yes 
filter to office print print review of the of my results. Print review. What is that print review? Yes, that's file. Mm, why do you want to have PDF? Um, oh, I see. Yeah, you feel free to have a PDF. That's fine. But I will look uh, more into the notebook submission. Uh, but in case if that's corrupt or something, yes, uh, I can use your PDF. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Now, PDF. Uh, so, sorry, not Jupyter notebook. Uh, sometimes has problem if your code is so big, right? If so, your code is so big, the Jupyter Notebook has some problem. In that case, you have to separate based on the parts. So if it's so big, for example, the part seven here can be very big because it's up to you to what extent you want to do, right? Part seven here can be very big. So in this case, you split into uh, a separate uh, notebook. Okay, any questions on this assignment? Yes. 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 So, what is your question? Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, actually, in the Q and A, so if you look at the Q and A here, uh, it's already updated as well. Uh, Q and A. So, where is that? Uh, do we need to manually write code? Uh, sorry, not that one. Um, number yes, number seven. Am I allowed to use OpenSea basic function like reading, writing, displaying images? Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, any other questions? So please read this uh, 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 frequently asked questions. Uh, so then you can know what is expected uh, from you. Uh, yep. So explanation, do I need to print it out or can just write in the explanation? Oh, you can write in the notebook. Um, Comments. Uh, uh, yeah, you can put on the code. Okay. On the code, you can put remark on the side of the code. Any other questions? Okay, so if there is no questions, uh, it has to be the deadline is strict. If you're late, uh, then you'll be deducted two points out of ten for the first twenty-four hours. For the second 24 hours, it will be another 20 points. All right, so be careful with that. Any other questions here before we move on? Okay, so if there's no questions, uh, let's continue then. Right, so now let's uh, say the second thing that uh, we mentioned earlier, there are, there are three things for today's lecture, right? Single field geometry, camera calibration, two field geometry, fundamental metrics. So we will do this topic of fundamental metrics, two field geometry. Fundamental metrics. So fundamental metrics is actually have to be uh, two views, two view geometry. Two view geometry is basically stereo. So this one is basically the concept of stereo. So imagine that you have a point and this one in the world coordinate system, HW, and you have two view, means that you have two images. And with the projection of P, matrix P, you will have a projection here, right? And this one is, call it C, the center of the camera. So this is C bar. Therefore, the first image. For the second image, 
you also have another line here and this one called C prime and the projected points it is a x bar and the other side is x bar prime now if you look at this one you can connect c and c prime you can connect c and c prime and the connection between c and c prime is called phase line so this one is called phase line the line that connects C prime C and C bar and C in this case is called phase line. And this the phase line has intersection with the plane, with the image plane. So you have intersection with the image plane here. And you have intersection with the image plane there. And the intersection between baseline and image plane is called epipole. So this one is E prime, and then this is E bar. It is called epipole. Okay, so again, E here is epipole. Now, you have E prime, and you have X prime. And if you connect X prime and E prime, if you connect this one, this green line is called L bar or L bar prime in this case, L L prime. The same for the other side, you can have this connecting line between epipole and X, and this is called L. So L here or L prime is called epipolar line. And this triangle, the red triangle, the red triangle here is called triangulation. So this one is called triangulation. Triangle. What's the red triangulation? Uh, well, you know what I mean, right? I don't know how to write this. Uh, but anyway, that's not important. The important thing is that this uh, this whole thing here, the whole thing here, the whole thing here is called epipolar geometry. Okay, the whole concept here is called epipolar geometry. Now, the question that we have here in the epipolar geometry is that what is the correlation between x and x prime? Okay, so that's the question here that we need to answer. What is the correlation between x and x prime? prime in this epipolar geometry well to answer this one there are two possibilities <clears throat> one of them is to be already learned here what is the first one how we can connect x and x prime if you have x prime and x what is the connection between this anyone we learn this equally last week is called what is matrix here there's a matrix here right it's called homography this is homography correlation that we can transform x into x prime if we have homography matrix another one so homography is a two view, as you can see, that the two planes basically, right? That's homography. And the other one is using fundamental matrix. This fundamental matrix for stereo is more important than homography. It's called fundamental 
methods. So what is fundamental matrix? So fundamental matrix, the first property is that X prime multiplied by F multiplied by X equals to zero. So if you look at this, X bar is actually, what is dimensionality of X bar? X bar, the dimension of X bar is three by one. That's right. X prime is also three by one. And then in this case, F, oh, sorry, it is from here. Uh, then it is uh, one by two. So F is three by three. So fundamental metric is three by three matrix. And the second property of fundamental metric is that L prime equals to F multiplied by X. So again, in this case, X is three by one, this is three by three, and L prime will be three by one. Okay, so let's go further. Let's take a look further. Okay, um, so we want to know what is the correlation between uh, between F and H. Let me think. So anyway, so let's look at this uh, further, number two further, right? If you look at number two further, L prime is equal to F multiplied by H, it's quite Bizarre, actually. This equation is quite bizarre, quite strange. Oh, well, it's quite useful as well. It means what? It means that if you have x here, if you have x there, x point red dot there, x bar, if you have x bar, and if you have f, assume that you have f, then you can transform this. You can transform this dot with F into the green line. So using F, you can transform the dot into green line in the other side. That's the meaning of this equation. You can get a line in the other side of the image only from a point. And that will be very useful later on for, for stereo system. But I will tell you later on why this is important. But you know the meaning of this, the geometrical meaning, right? So you have a dot in one side of image multiplied with that F, suddenly you will get a line on the other side. And this line will intersect with the corresponding point X prime. Okay. So let's go deeper into this L equal to Fx. So L. If you look at, at this side here, the right hand side, if you look at this right hand side here, right? L prime is formed by E prime and X prime. We can get L prime from X prime and E prime, correct? A line is formed by two points, and in this case, X prime and E prime. So we can one L prime equals to x prime or x prime multiply or cross product with e prime anyone understand this cross product how many of you know about cross product the meaning i, I know that you know about the cross product but do you know the meaning of cross product intuitively in the geometrical way what is the meaning of cross product in geometry? Anyone? Well, I will explain to you. So this one, two points, this one is a point, this is a point, and give you the cross product give you a line. Why this is correct? So let's have an example here. Why this is correct, right? So imagine that you have in two dimensional to, to be to be easy, and then you have two points. You have two points here. For example, uh, two points, and one point is 
one one one, for example, is homogeneous ordinate system. This is one one one. This is one and one. This is the other point is two and two. So you cross product this one 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 with two two one. Okay. So you do the cross product. So how do we do the cross product? Anyone know how to do the cross product? This is a high school kind of material, right? Cross product. So how do we do the cross product? Anyone? So you have to form I, J, K. One, 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 two, two, one, right? So in that case, first you have plus, plus I, right? And minus J and plus K. So what is this element here? The first one, the I one, is the determinant of I. Determinant of I means that you you don't bother about this, you, you forget about that, you only find the determinant of that one. What is the determinant of that one? One multiplied by one minus one multiplied by two, which gives you minus one. Okay, so what is the J then? J, you do the same thing. So now it's minus one. J is this one. You forget about that one. You do the operation, the determinant of the other I and K. What is the determinant for I or for J here now then? One multiplied by one minus two multiplied by one give you minus one. So this one is become positive one. How about K? K will be zero. So in the end, you by doing this operation, you will have a factor minus one one zero. Right? What does it mean by this minus one one zero? This means that you have to go into in, what is that called implicit equation of a line. Implicit of equation of a line is a x plus b y plus c equals to equals to Zero. This is the equation of a line, right? A here, what is the value of A? Minus one, which is minus A. B equals to one, Y. C equals to zero, so this one equals to zero. Y equals to X. What is Y equals to X? Y equals to X is this one. So that's how we get L from the cross product. Okay, so that's the meaning of this. With the cross product of two points, you can get a line. So this one is x prime, for example, and then this e prime, and this is l prime. Any questions here? So we can use cross product to get a line from two points. Right. So after we know this, Let's go further. Um, well, in this case, we don't like to have a cross product. If you don't want to have cross product, then we have to convert this one into a matrix. So we have to convert one of them into a matrix, so then we don't use a cross product because cross product is troublesome. You have to compute in this way, right? It's very, very tedious. So because we don't want to use a cross product, then we convert E prime into a skew matrix. So this one is called skew matrix. Skew matrix E and multiple X prime. So again, in this case, this is three by one, this is three by one, the skew matrix here is three by three. This is called skew matrix, skew, skew matrix. Skew, skew, symmetric, Matrix. So, what is the definition of skewed symmetric matrix? Skewed symmetric matrix definition of E for prime X, uh, X here is a skewed matrix, equals to zero E Z prime minus E Y prime E Z prime zero 
minus e x prime e y prime e x prime zero. So this is called skew matrix. So this is the definition of skew matrix. You transform the vector into a matrix so that you can avoid the cross product. Okay, so this is very useful trick in mathematics. So basically now you are free from cross product in this equation, in the last equation here. Free from cross product. Okay, so that is one thing that L equals to E. Now let's go further. L prime equals to E cross E skewed, E prime skewed. Multiplied by x bar, uh, sorry, multiplied by x prime, multiplied by x prime here. And x prime, according to homography, is h multiplied by x bar. Okay. And we know that from number one, from the property number one, from this property, so from this property here, and from the property here, we know that uh, actually this one equal n x star. So in other words, the connection between h and f can be described as f e prime skewed. H. So there's the correlation between homography and fundamental matrix. Now, for two pair, for a pair of, of images, a pair of images, you only have one fundamental matrix. Okay? From a, a pair of, of images, you only have one fundamental matrix. But in a pair of images, you will have many H, many homography matrices. So this correlation is actually many to one correlation. Okay, so if you want to know deeper on that issue, how this can be many to one correlation, you need to read the textbook. But I can just tell you here that the fundamental matrix is only one for a pair of images, and homography will have many of matrices possible for two images. Any questions here? So I just introduced you here a fundamental matrix. I can go further and further on with this fundamental matrix because there's a very rich property of fundamental matrix, but I will stop here because the useful things about fundamental matrix for our purpose of this discussion is this one, number two, and to some extent, number one as well. Okay, but practically, the most useful thing here is number one. Any questions so far for fundamental matrix? Well, fundamental matrix in, is invented by two researchers, two group of researchers. One is called Richard Hartley, which is the author of the multiple view geometry. And the other is Fogeras. Fogeras is a French guy. Right? Uh, it's invented in, in 1980s uh, already. Um, and it happens that Richard Hartley, the author of the books, actually my postdoc supervisor. So I have the opportunity to ask him, right? So why you call it fundamental matrix? Uh, well, fundamental matrix here is called F, right? Appreciated by F. And he said that, you know, uh, before this F, before this fundamental matrix, there is a essential matrix. And essential matrix at that time is appreciated as E. E as for essential matrix is by famous uh, mathematician uh, early 1940s, 1950s, already know about essential matrix. So fundamental matrix, if you do not know 
the, I'm not sure which one is which, but if you do not know the intrinsic camera parameters, I think, then if, it, if you know, okay, if you know intrinsic parameters, then fundamental metrics become essential metrics, basically. So they are the same thing, only the slight property are different. Fundamental metric is more dependent on K and essential metric is independent from K. But anyway, so the long story short, uh, and I asked uh, this question of why this is called fundamental metrics. And the reason is because previously there is E called essential metrics, right? And after E will be F, right? After E in the letter with order is F. So it, should, it must be F and we call it fundamental. Well, there's nothing fundamental there. It's just because of F after E. Right, so anyway, so there's a uh, anecdote uh, for this why this is called fundamental metrics. Okay, any questions here? Okay, there's nothing fundamental about metrics, okay, but it's useful. Uh, anyway, any questions here so far? If you look at the YouTube, there's a song uh, called Fundamental Metrics Song. <laughs> yeah, so it, there will be some property. Uh, mentioned in the in the in the in the song. So if you want to remember the property of fundamental metrics, you can just try to learn the song. Anyway, uh, okay. So now let's discuss further on the theory. So using this, uh, I will explain later on why fundamental metric is very important for theory. But first of all, I have to explain to you the concept of theory using a simple first thing first called rectified images. Rectified images. Stereo system using rectified images. So what is rectified images? Basically, rectified images assume that you have an image, two images of an of the same object. So imagine that it's a point here. Uh, and this point located at x1 and y1. This is the a point of x, xi, xi bar. And then in the, this is the first image or left image, left image. And then the other one is we have a right image. Okay. So for the right image, you also have the same point, which is called xi prime. Right, so we have prime there, means that actually in the 3D world they are the same points, but after the projection, then of course the location will be different. So this location here is two, and in rectified image, so this is, you should remember this one, in rectified image, y2 is equal to y1. So this is the basic property of rectified image, means that in rectified image, this line are the same. The information for the y is the same. Only the information in the x axis are different. So x x one is not equal to x two. Okay. Any questions here? Oh, by the way, this is a is a assignment, a stereo. So this is I think is part one. Oh no, this one is part two. Part two of the assignment. So from this kind of system called rectified image, you have to know the depths. So you have to compute the depths from this rectified image. So rectified image is fairly simple. You have two images uh, with different with different uh, parameters uh, of the x-axis. So rectified rectified image stereo. So this is uh, called rectified image. So let me see which one is the best one. Rectified image. Um, yeah, so this one is also rectified image, this one called this is called Chukuba, Chukuba stereo image. So in this case, as you can see, in the y-axis, everything is the same. Everything is in the, the same y-axis. 
So point in the, on the top of the nose, the tip of the nose, and the point in the top of the nose here, they are the same y axis. Only the difference is in the y x axis. Okay, so this one is called uh, stereo. Uh, we, we need to find the depth. So the depth, so if you depth from rectified images, so the example will be this one, okay? So this one, these two images are rectified images. The y-axis are the same. If y-axis are the same, then you expect, the expectation is that you find the depth. Okay, so is it understandable? All right. Any questions here, anyone? Okay, so let me see. Uh, I can give you the very exact example of that. Wait a minute. Um, let me see if I can find the exact exam, the exact uh, CA2 uh, assignment 2. Where is that? Um, All right, uh, great. Okay, so basically this is uh, assignment two. So in assignment two, using Markov random field, we will learn Markov random field next week, that we want to remove uh, there's no next week. I mean, sorry. Next week will be recess week, uh, uh, weeks after that. Uh, so we will learn about Markov random field, remove the noise, uh, something like this. And then the second one is uh, stereo from rectified images. So this is rectified images. Everything on the y-axis are the same. And then you as the expectation is that you need to find this kind of depth estimation. Okay, so that is the state. It's very simple. I mean, this one is very simple. Uh, I will let you know later on how to do it. Uh, so, and then we need to have a depth from stereo. This stereo is not rectified. This one is not rectified. The y-axis will not the same as the x-axis. Uh, sorry, the y-axis in the left and the y-axis in the, in the right will not be the same. But I will give you the camera calibration. I give you KRT. So from the KRT, you will use this equation here to solve the problem. Okay, so I will, I will of course teach you this one, how we can do the computation of this uh, depth estimation. And then uh, the next part number four is to use video. To use the video to get something like this. So this is called depth estimation from video. Okay. And of course, there's an advanced, uh, advanced version of this. So uh, advanced version is, is really up to you how far you want to go. Okay, so that's the basic idea of assignment two. And assignment two, will be, you will have one month to finish assignment two. So one month for assignment one, one month for assignment two. So you have plenty of time, uh, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, so basically that is the idea, right? And for this one, basically you will get what is called, I will explain that in more detail uh, next week, uh, next week, for disparity. Disparity is very simple. Disparity is, uh, is you compute the distance of x1, x2, and that's it. And disparity is actually, or, or d, disparity, is the inverse, has the inverse correlation with the depth. So g is the depth. 
Z is the depth estimation, D is disparity, and disparity and Z has this kind of uh, inverse correlation. So if you know disparity, you get you know the depth. So basically that's it. That's very simple. X1 minus X2. So the problem is that how we can find X1 and X2, right? So this is called matching. Matching means that we try to trace this, this point here, the pixel here, in such a way that this one is the best match to that one in terms of RGB, if it is color images. And once you have these matching points, then you can do the computation of disparity in a very, very simple way like that. And then you know already the depth. So disparity or, or depth from rectified images is very simple. It's just a matching uh, problem. But again, I will explain this in details uh, in two weeks' time. All right, anyone, uh, are there any questions? Are there any questions? No? Okay, so I can tell you the plan here. Uh, of course, the plan here is that next week you will have a recess week. You don't have any things uh, to do. But after that, we will learn about Markov random field. So we are getting into, back again to statistics because Markov random field is statistical uh, techniques. And we will learn about graph cuts and we learn about depth estimation and that's, that's it. That will be the end of, of geometry. And after geometry, we will learn about uh, optical flow, about motion analysis, right? After optical flow of motion analysis, we will learn about uh, optimization, about how we can, we will learn about low level vision basically, how to remove noise and so on using optimization techniques. All right, so that's the plan. And I think that's all today. And thank you everyone. I will see you in two weeks time. And happy, happy, happy. Thank you.